We can optically exfiltrate or steal files off of a computer with nothing more than a cell phone and a camera. But how do we reassemble all of that? We're finding out today. Hello and welcome to Hack5. My name is Darren Kitchen. It's your weekly dose of Technolust. I'm very excited because today we are continuing a series that started with this crazy idea of can we exfiltrate files? Can we steal files off of a computer without using storage or network or Bluetooth or anything like that? Just literally recording the screen with our cell phone. And We've so far proven with the help of BGWA, uh, one of the community members of Hack5, that this is indeed possible. And what we're gonna do now is take it to the next step and find out, okay, well, if we have a video file containing a bunch of moving QR codes, how do we systematically decode those? And this is the beautiful thing about these ideas and the collaboration with you guys is because it is Prodi Code who has stepped up with an awesome script here that I wanna show off that is going to automate this entire process. By the way, if you're wondering why we're doing this, this is hacking. We're doing this because we can. <laughs> So you can find the QR data reconstructor over at Product Code's GitHub, and it's really simple to install. Basically, git clone this repository, I've already done that, and all of the setup is in a setup script file to make things super simple for you, to getting those dependencies, it's all Python based. So I have a copy of it right here. If we take a look, uh, I've got it in QR data reconstructor, and if you just cat this setup.sh, you'll see all this is really gonna do is a bunch of pseudo pip install, whatever those dependencies are. I do want to note one thing that I found odd about my installation. I'm using Kali 2018.1 and I had to apt get install lib zbar dev in order to get the zbar pip install going. Otherwise, everything was really straightforward and you can figure that the, the usage here is, is pretty simple. Basically, we're gonna build on what we did last week, which if you don't remember is we're gonna take, say, this file right here. This is our target file that we're gonna exfiltrate and liberate off of our target machine and we're going to turn it into a bunch of QR codes using BG WA's awesome uh, exfiltration tool here, which is all in JavaScript, and then you just choose your file, and it creates all of those codes, and then you go ahead and hit playback, and then boom, you just record that with your cell phone. So now we're gonna take all of those moving QR codes and get them back into a file after we've you know gone back to our hacker layer or wherever you are. So as you can see here, I've got my video. It's in an MP4, which is what you're gonna need, and it looks pretty good. If you do pause it at like a certain moment, you will see that you'll get like kind of a half QR code, there you go, between one and the other. And this is what I was really worried about. Uh, thankfully, the rate at which this is going, there's enough clear moments and the Python script that's gonna decode these is gonna be able to handle that and say like, that's not a valid QR code. The one thing I will note on the video, however, was that at least personally on my experience with my Pixel 2 phone, I had to boost the contrast and the brightness in order to get good results out of this tool. So you can see this is what it was originally and this is it after I've basically just punched up the gain. So now let's take those 61 images and in that video file, we'll go ahead and reconstruct them. So all you have to do is Python and then the decoder.py, which I have in the same directory here with my video. You say your video file, in my case is test2.mp4, and then whatever your output is, we'll say output.txt. Now this is going to take a while. So while this is crunching, let's actually take a look at what this script is doing. So if I open the decoder and gedit, obviously we start out with crazy cool ASCII graphics because you should. And otherwise, basically what this does is in this while loop, it loops over every single frame in the video, creating it into a JPEG file here. That JPEG file is, we gotta figure out if it is a QR code, and if it is, we go ahead and append it, and then we get a little bit here to make sure that we do duplicate. So if we see the exact same QR code as before, we're gonna go ahead and throw it out. Now, there could, I guess, be an instance where, I mean, this is just base 64 data over and over and over in QR codes. There could be a collision where you end up with two QR codes back to back, and then one would get thrown out. Wouldn't say it's perfect, but I think it'd kind of be rare that that would happen. Otherwise, it just finishes up by doing a little cleanup here. I have to take the rattling toy away from Peach right now. She's being noisy. Also, if you're wondering why the lighting is a little different in this episode, it's because Peach here decided that she was going to destroy that lamp over there. So now I need a new studio light. 
What? What? Oh, there we go. There we go. Obligatory puppy. All right, so our file is done. Nope, nope, don't step on the keyboard. Okay, you're as bad as a cat. So it's done processing the video. Let's go ahead and check out the output. If I, I don't know, more output.txt, you'll see we've got base64 encoded goodness, and it should be the exact same base64 if I were to just base64 peach.jpg. Now, I could diff this. Uh, you will notice that it does have the header that we need to go ahead and view this as a JPEG. And actually, what's really nice is, yeah, I get that it's still base64, but what's beautiful about this is it builds on like the data schema that we were talking about weeks past, which means if I just open this TXT file here, you'll see that it begins with data colon image, JPEG, base64 encoding, which means I can now just copy all of that, come back over to Firefox, and just in the URL bar, you can just paste that in and I have the file. That is just so cool. So I have to give mad props to BGWA and Paracode because this is just so cool to see the community come together creating this proof of concept even better and better and better. So both of those guys get uh, $200 Hack5 gift cards and if you have a payload of your own to submit, it's hack5.org slash payload. Also, we should be moving into our new studio here real soon so I can't wait to get out of my living room. It should be exciting. All right, with that, I'm Darren Kitchen, and for Peach, we're reminding you, trust your techno lust. No, right? No? You want me to get your Linux box? Domain.com has all your website needs, from .com and .net domains to intuitive website builders, so you can take that first step in creating your online identity. Let me tell you, there's no domain extension like a .com or a .net, or if you want to brand yourself, Domain.com has over 300 domain extensions like .club and .space. These guys are huge fans of Hack5. They're affordable, reliable. We've been using them for years. They've got all the tools you need to share your ideas with the world. And because they're such big fans, they are hooking you up with 15% off their already affordable prices. So get domain names and web hosting and email, and just be sure to use that coupon code HAK5. So when you think domain names, think domain.com.